Okay, in the last tutorial, I showed you how we could animate absolutely any effect by actually animating the render buffer. So I'm going to expand on that now because there is a slight issue with this is, as you can see here, the buffer is actually rectangular. Okay, so you can see here we've got a rectangle of our effect moving around. Now that might be absolutely fine. And if you're doing something like an image with transparency, you're okay, you can actually, you know, it won't be a square. But I'm going to show you how we can actually fix this. So let's start from scratch. Let's reset our buffer. Okay, so it's all reset. And now we have our pinwheel just here. Now, the first way I'm going to show you the, with the way to do it with inbuilt effects, but this is quite more limited and uh, you wouldn't really use the render buffer to animate, but I'll show you why that is the case. But all we need to do is drop on the shape object. Okay, so we can see we've got a shape object here. And you can see we're limited to the amount of shapes we can do. So providing you only want to have the animation, the shape, that's absolutely fine. Use this method. You can also do emojis. So you've got a few more shapes. So let's have a look at how we use the shape object to shape this render buffer in effect. So the first thing we need to do is make the thickness 100%, reduce to count to one, and then we'll just increase the start size a little bit. Turn off the random initial sh uh, shape size. Set the lifetime to 100. Set the growth to zero. Then disable fade away, disable random location, and there we go. We have now got, in this case, a circle. To make it a little bit more interesting, I'll make it a heart shape. And let's just increase that size now. A little. So you can see you can make it whatever size we want. So I've got a size there. And now that I've got this, I'm going to put this effect over the top of my pinwheel. And I'll make them both the same size on the timeline by aligning both times. So you can see now we've got our heart. So I'm going to move my heart up a little so it's uh, more central. So I can do that using the X and Y. Now I'm going to show you two ways we can animate with the shape object. We can use the effect within here but the first thing we need to do is we need to mask out this so that our pinwheel effect is actually inside our heart. So we just select our top layer and we come to our blending mode here and we say one is true unmask. And you can see now our pinwheel is there. And I'm just going to in that a little bit so we've got there. Now we could animate within the, with the X and Y coordinates of the heart itself. So we do this. I'm going to load a value. Oh, in fact, I'll just do, I'll just bounce it up and down the screen. Good to choose the other one. Okay, so I've animated the heart. Now we have got a problem that the pinwheel is no longer aligned. So I'm going to show you why now the render buffer is the better way to do it in some cases. So let's reset this back and make it so our pinwheel is central in this case. This is all a design choice. Remember, you might not have a pinwheel in the background. It could be an image. It could be absolutely anything. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the render buffer again. So we've got our heart. Click here. Right click on our render buffer edit. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to load up a value curve that I created in our 2D path generator. Okay, so I'm going to load the X coordinate. Okay, so it's figure eight. And the okay, and now I'm going to load the Y coordinates. 
and click apply. And now you can see the heart is going in the figure eight. We've still got that problem that the pinwheel is not matching what is happening with the front layer. But not a problem. We go to the pinwheel layer or whatever you've got displayed below and we go edit. And we make sure that the buffers are animated the same. Apply, and now you can see the pinwheel or whatever effect you had within that heart is all animated in this case in a figure eight. Now, if you do, didn't want it to go off the edge of the screen, you would just make sure your when you did the 2D character, uh, 2D path generator, you you know made the figure eight a lot smaller. Okay, so that's there. And just quickly show you now the next way we can animate. This is all very well, as I said, if the shape object is an object what you need. But imagine we want to animate absolutely any effect. So for this, I just downloaded an image from Google of a pumpkin and I put it into Photoshop. OK, so I've got my pumpkin here in Photoshop. Now you could use any free tool because all you're going to do is make that image a black and white image. So anywhere that is white is our pinwheel will show and anywhere that is black, it will be blocked. Okay, so I save that as a PNG and then we come back to X lights and I've already got that image and now I'm going to change this shape to a picture object. Okay, initially it goes square because we don't have an image and now I load my pumpkin and now because the pumpkin is really big yeah it's going off the edge of the screen so now I just make sure I've got no scaling set and then I'm just going to change the start scale to something like 15 and the end scale to 15 okay and now you can see we now have a pumpkin with an effect behind it animated in a figure eight. Obviously, this is because it retained the work I did on the buffer before, but if I just want to quickly change that, so I go here, edit, I'll erase these, and I'll just make the pumpkin bounce up and down. So I just go to Y, choose this one, and you can see now the pumpkin is bouncing up and down. But because the buffer is different on the effects below, it doesn't stay in sync. So we just make sure that we change this one to match. And now we have our bouncing pumpkin or any shape or design you want. OK, so I hope you found that interesting and I hope you find it useful. So until next time, have a great day.